In our Sunrise Smart Start, a 47-year-old male from Rochester has non-life-threatening injuries after being stabbed. Rochester police say this happened just after 10 p.m. Wednesday on the 800 block of Hudson Avenue. The victim was taken to the hospital. The suspect, we're told, stayed on scene and was taken into custody without incident. Investigators are still trying to figure out what led up to the altercation and any potential charges. Meanwhile, officers are investigating a call for shots fired in a possible vehicle on fire last night at the 100 block of Wild Street. Upon arrival, police located evidence of shots fired and the vehicle engulfed in flames. With the assistance of the Rochester Fire Department, the scene was secured. Police say while investigating, they found out the vehicle on fire was stolen from a Rondequite. Officers say there was also a second vehicle stolen from a Rondequite on scene. At this time, no injuries are reported and no suspects are in custody. And Rochester police are investigating after shots were fired in the area of Clifford Avenue and Morton Place overnight. An officer was on patrol in the area when he heard shots fired just before 1 this morning. The officer says they saw multiple people and vehicles fleeing. They located evidence shots were fired, but nobody has come forward saying they were injured. This investigation is ongoing, but there is no threat to the public. It's been about a week since Rochester Mayor Malik Evans named the new police chief of the Rochester Police Department. Chief David Smith had been serving as the interim chief since October of last year. Smith inherits a department facing a staffing shortage with currently more than 70 vacant positions. While filling those vacancies is a priority, he says rebuilding community connections and bonds is also a goal of his. In reality, as much as I would like it to happen, it's just not going to happen now because of the calls for service and, you know, the staffing shortage. So, you know, I just ask folks to be patient. Smith is technically not officially police chief just yet. He needs to be confirmed by city council, something he says will take place at their August meeting. Rochester police have made an arrest in a shooting that took place back in June on Remington Street. 46-year-old Louis Osario, now identified as a suspected shooter, he has been charged with assault in the first degree. The victim of the shooting is expected to survive but has significant life-altering injuries. The Greece Police Department still asking for the public's help in the search for a missing Greece woman. Carrie Ann Hine has been missing since July 10th. She was last seen leaving her home on Armstrong Road in the town of Greece. Police tell us she was driving a blue 2017 Toyota Corolla with the registration JKK1273. Anyone with info should call 911. 850 registered nurses from Rochester General Hospital have voted to unionize. They are now the Rochester Union of Nurses and Allied Professionals. The final vote last night, 431 to 295, in favor of forming that independent union. The nurses cite unsafe staffing conditions and poor retention as major factors in their decision. RGH nurses say they look forward to negotiating improvements with hospital administration. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand hosting a press conference pushing for the passage of the 9-11 Responder and Survivor Health Funding Correction Act. The goal of that bill to provide proper funding for health care to first responders and survivors of 9-11 who were exposed to toxic chemicals that caused illnesses and other physical and mental health issues. Gillibrand says the bill is important to support those who continue to suffer over a decade later. And research says it's likely that more have died, more people have died due to 9-11 related illnesses after the fact than in the attack itself. All right, let's go ahead and switch, it, uh, switch gears now. Check in with James Gilbert for a look at our forecast. Yeah. Going to be another nice day, James. Yeah, across the region, uh, I think, uh, Allie, we've got uh, temperatures getting mostly into the mid to upper 70s locally. But if you are heading uh, maybe to the Hudson Valley, we've got a bit of warmth there over in New York City getting to the uh, low 80s in the afternoon capital region there it is 82 degrees uh, so no issues certainly in the weather outside of an isolated sprinkle or two nothing like we had yesterday certainly but there could be some rain by the weekend we'll take a look at the eight day forecast at the end of the show Ali how are the roads looking right now well, James, we are still following that accident uh, in Menden on West Bloomfield Road, northbound, southbound at Taylor Road. But otherwise, other than some construction on the main arteries, uh, things look pretty good out there. Should be a smooth ride into work. 
As a local digital currency company continues to grow in size, the governor is considering a bill that would slow down crypto mining operations. Erica DeCoste spoke to the company to learn how they might be affected. <clears throat> she joins us in studio this morning with more. Erica. Good morning. Well, Foundry has quickly become the largest digital currency company based in western New York, serving clients across the country. Three years ago, they had three employees and have since grown to 170. They tell me this legislation to slow crypto mining feels like a threat to their growth. Firstly, what is crypto mining? Foundry Director of Public Policy Kyle Schnapps says it has nothing do, to do with actual mining. Just a slang term for data processing. The processing is key to making cryptocurrency like Bitcoin secure. Foundry makes computer processors for it, but some lawmakers argue this requires a lot of electricity, perhaps a threat to our local climate. The Senate has passed legislation to put a two-year moratorium on any new or renewed air permits for these power plants, and Schnapp says this could severely impact their business. Bitcoin miners only use 0.2% of global energy consumption. The environmental lobby believes by targeting this industry, because people don't understand it yet, they can make a lot of headway and get a win and raise money and things like that. Now it's up to the governor to decide if she wants to pass or veto this bill. In the meantime, the DEC recently denied an air permit request for Bitcoin mining operation along Seneca Lake. In the studio, Eric at a cost, News 8. Eric, thank you. And for this full story and more on how cryptocurrency works, you can head to our website, rochesterfirst.com. In national news now, roughly 40 people are unaccounted for after a flash flooding swept through last night, uh, Tuesday night, excuse me, through different parts of Buckhannon County in Virginia. Significant damage stretching over 10 miles in the sheriff's office reporting that as many as 150 homes were flooded or washed away. Roads completely wiped out. Virginia's governor has declared a state of emergency to assist with response and recovery operations. The governor's office said the same community was hit by flooding last year and was still in the process of recovering. In the wake of the most recent mass shooting in Highland Park, Illinois, gun control advocates rallying on Capitol Hill. They're calling on Congress to pass new gun control measures, including a universal background check and a ban on assault weapons. Last month, lawmakers passed a new gun bill, gun control bill, but a ban on assault weapons has yet to be passed. The House is expecting to pass another bill this week, which could save lives. The Active Shooter Alert Act creates a communications network which would inform communities when active shooters are in areas, similar to an Amber Alert system. President Biden is in Israel visiting the country for the first time as president. Israel is the president's first stop on his trip to the Middle East, also taking him to the West Bank and the United Arab Emirates. He stopped at the Yad Vashem World Holocaust Remembrance Center in Jerusalem. You can see him there. The president presented a wreath where the victims are buried. On the ground in the hall are the names of Nazi concentration camps victims in both English and Hebrew. Well, here's what some people might be talking about at the water cooler this morning. Victor Olofsson coming back to the Buffalo Sabres, the 26-year-old winger, signing a two-year deal worth just under $5 million per season. Olofsson had 29 assists and 49 points last season. Both were career highs. The Sabres also adding defenseman Ilya Labushkin. Hopefully I'm saying that right. And goaltender Eric Comrie on two-year deals to close out the first day of free agency. Uh, some good gets there. Yeah, sure. James. Um, sounds good. It was yeah, an intense video. Sounds great. Um, but, you know, I'm thinking when I'm watching them that yeah. being in an ice rink might yeah. feel kind of good to beat the heat today, too. Yeah, cooling off a little bit, certainly. Uh, luckily, the afternoon temperatures aren't too bad uh, for today. In fact, I like uh, mid to upper 70s. That's my perfect temperature, uh, mid 80s, as some may like. You'll have to wait until Saturday for your day. So here's the eight day forecast. It's on your screen. We'll go day by day. Partly cloudy means clouds this morning, sun this afternoon. Tomorrow looks great, mostly sunny, highs around 80. Then we'll go upper 80s for Saturday, dry there. Sunday, partly cloudy. I've got an 88, but a 20% chance for rain in there for the afternoon. I do think a couple of showers and maybe a few thunderstorms pop up late in the day 
and then that carries into Monday. And then we're cruising into the upper 80s, Allie. I think we, we could be potentially looking at a prolonged stretch of well mm -hmm. above average temperatures next week. Uh, and then kind of finishing off the month of July. The senior forecast, 80s all the way, James. Yeah, cruising right along. All right, thank you. And thank you so much for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update coming up in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings, up next.